Five Nights at Freddy's 2 is considered to be one of the best games in the series and is a lot of people's favourite. However, in a previous video, explain why I think Five Nights at Freddy's 2 is kinda bad. I hate how almost every character behaves the same and they aren't engaging or fun to deal with. It feels like an RNG clusterfuck if I'm being honest. However, there is a fan game that's out there that fixes a lot of the problems I have of this game and that game is Fazbear Entertainment Storage made by DeMichael and this game is absolutely incredible. It's super well made and a lot of fun. But what makes this game so good? And how does it fix my problems with Final Fantasy 2? Well, let's talk about it. This is how Fazbear Entertainment Storage fixes Five Nights at Freddy's 2. So Fazbear Entertainment Storage has the player be a security guard in charge of watching over a storage facility for Fazbear Entertainment, run by a guy named Henry. Y yeah, we know who that is. And in this facility is where the toy animatronics are kept. Henry has a theory that someone is coming into the facility and tamping the animatronics, and considering they are walking around trying to kill you, he might be right. So this game has some of the best difficulty progressions I've seen in any of these games, introducing new characters and mechanics in a way that makes it fun and engaging while not overwhelming the player or going too slow. And every character behaves in a unique way, which makes the addition of new characters and mechanics all the more engaging, as you have to think about the new strategies each night of gameplay. Night 1 starts off with Toy Bonnie and Toy Chica. By the way, just we'll just add the designs are absolutely amazing. Toy Bonnie will make his way to the vent on the left side of your room, and you have to put on the mask. However, he leaves super quick, unlike the one from FNAF 2. Toy Chica will climb into the overhead vent, which you have to close, and you can tell when she's gone from a small audio clue. Quite simple, nothing too shabby, but overall still a quite intense night. Night 2 has Toy Freddy, who will appear in the hall in front of you, and you have to shine your light on him. However, unlike in Final Freddy's 2, the flashlight has barely any battery, and Toy Freddy will only come at certain times, so you have to time your flashes so you don't run out of power. There's actually also a power mechanic, where if you keep the vents shut for too long, the power will go out and you're basically a sitting duck, although you can still use your mask and flashlight, but it doesn't help much. Night 3 introduces Mangle and Balloon Boy. Balloon Boy behaves the same as Toy Bonnie, except he drains your flashlight if he gets in, and like Toy Bonnie, he leaves super quick almost immediately. <laughs> Mangle is the more complicated character as they will try and get into one of the three vents on your vent camera. You have to seal the correct vent to block them from destroying the vent and damaging your power. If they get all three vents, then you are dead. Night 4 is the same as Night 3, but more difficult. And Night 5 introduces the puppet, who you have to find on the camera when it flashes a find her message or something similar and a wind sound effect plays. When you find them, just look at them to get rid of them. This night is one of the most intense and fun nights I have had in any other Final Freddy's game. Dealing with all of the threats at once makes for a super fun time and successfully being this night is also satisfying. The game ends with Henry saying he's going to destroy the animatronics once and for all. And he does, and adds two more. Oh my god. Fredbear and Spring Bonnie combine all the previous mechanics into one intense boss challenge. One that I don't understand and can't beat and I'm sure there's a way to do it, but I'm not going to talk about it in this video. Anyways, that's the basic game summary. This game is absolutely incredible and I encourage anyone who's interested to try it out. So let's go over how this game actually solves my issues with FNAF 2. For starters, having pretty much every single character behave in a completely different way allows the player to form a unique connection with each character and forces the player to use their brain to form strategies and think fast rather than just repeating the same action for six minutes straight. All the mechanics feel super flushed out and they all balance out super well to create a super fun experience. This game kind of reminds me of One Night at Flumpy's 2 with its intense gameplay, with every character behaving differently and you have to keep track of like five different things at once. It makes for super engaging and fun gameplay. Also, the fact that doing an action like shutting a vent, shining the light or putting on the mask makes the character leave in a few seconds rather than the drawn out 5 second blackouts of the second game. It makes the gameplay feel super rewarding every time you successfully fend off a character or get out of a tight situation. The flashlight mechanic in particular feels super fleshed out as you can't just spam it and instead have to use it sparingly to prevent Toy Freddy from killing you. And they added the power back from the first game which is one of my favourite all time mechanics and got rid of the music box, which I fucking hate. Having to constantly worry about something like winding a music box doesn't make a game fun. And the puppet's new mechanic is similar in that you have to prioritise it above all else, but isn't so high maintenance that if anything goes wrong, you won't instantly die. This game is so well balanced and doesn't rely on stupidly fast reaction times, which makes the game feel fair. Even if you die or get stuck on a night, you don't feel cheated out of a win by one stupid mistake, like not reacting immediately to some RNG bullshit. In total, this game keeps the fast-paced nature and high intensity that made FNAF 2 so loved 
and balance it in a way that makes it fun, engaging and feel fair to the player. Also a quick few unrelated side notes about this game. The character designs in this game are absolutely incredible and the soundtrack is absolutely amazing and I've been playing it throughout this video as well. The narration from Henry is also quite good and the story while a little goofy at times with Henry's conspiracy theories is still super solid and makes you feel like you are actually working for a legit company with an actual manager or boss giving you the rundown rather than some guy sitting in an office being forced to relay information to the best of his ability. It gives this game that realism. And I mean, the concept of this game is just so cool too. I mean, we never learned what happened to the toys and this game answers that. If you're interested, I highly recommend playing this game. I won't spoil anything else, but it's absolutely incredible. I'll put a download link in the description. And if you haven't already, make sure to like the video. And if you enjoyed, please subscribe. It helps out a lot. I hope you had a wonderful day and I will see you in the next video.